If you're like me, the worst part of being in the cold is how my hands and feet can get really cold to the point of being very painful and forcing me back indoors. The hands and feet are also where our biggest risks are for frostbite. What are the evolutionary forces that may have shaped how our hands and fingers developed? We'll take a look at this in today's episode. Our hands overall have a lot of skin but very little mass, such that they form about 9% of our total skin surface, yet only about 2% of our mass. And our fingers are long and narrow cylinders, so there's an especially high rate of heat loss from them. However, narrower fingers make it easier to handle objects, so perhaps there's an evolutionary trade-off between these two forces. In 2018, Stephanie Payne from Oxford asked the question of whether the shape of our hands and fingers may have been driven by the need to maximize finger dexterity on the one hand versus minimizing the amount of heat loss on the other. So Payne took over 100 participants with a wide range of hand and finger sizes along with body sizes. She then put their hands in ice water for three minutes. After this, she recorded their finger temperatures with a thermal camera as they rewarmed and also had them do a test of finger dexterity involving assembling small metal bits and washers. Here we see the main results. In the blue, we saw that the longer the fingers were relative to the hand, the lower the finger temperature during rewarming. In contrast, we see in the red that the wider the hand, the higher the finger temperatures. And in the black, not surprisingly, the wider the fingers, the harder it was handling the small metal bits and the lower the score in the dexterity task. Payne also did a number of measures on the size and shape of the participants. What she found was that neither finger temperature nor dexterity were related to overall height, body weight, or amount of body fat. So overall size and the amount of body insulation didn't seem to be a factor in hand response. However, the more muscular you were, the warmer your hands, and this might be because muscles generate more heat than fat. So these data support the idea that hand and finger size may have been a result of the competition between two forces. Wider and shorter hands and fingers have lower rates of heat loss, but there comes a point where they cannot perform tasks as well. Narrower and longer hands and fingers are great for manual dexterity, but can result in more heat loss and risk for cold injuries. I hope that you've enjoyed this look into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Professor Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab at Brock University in Canada. Check out our other short environmental physiology videos or our longer, more detailed Environmental Ergonomics Symposium series. Thanks for watching. See you next time.